good morning, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Evolutionary Church. It's so delightful to be with you here this gorgeous morning. We are in week 118, by the way, of Evolutionary Church. It's sort of hard to believe. Um, we want to welcome everyone to Evolutionary Church, where our mission is a planetary awakening in love through a unique self-symphony, and together we declare that the last day of the old face of evolution is honored as the first day of the new face of creation. Hello, everyone. I'm Lisa Witter. I'm the Executive Vice President for the Center for Integral Wisdom, and I am your moderator and the executive producer of this gorgeous gathering we do every single week called Evolutionary Church. And in Evolutionary Church, we are connected, we are whole, and we are expressions of the entire process of creation and we are activating a new humanity we are awakening as a new species that we call homo amor we are as we say every week a church we're a synagogue we're a mosque we're a temple we're a zendo we're all of it no one is excluded everyone is included and we come together to attune to the evolutionary impulse that's awakening in us as us and through us. So welcome home, everyone. Welcome, welcome to this week's broadcast of Evolutionary Church. If you are new, let us know that you're new for everyone, actually. Open up your chat box, say hi. Make sure that when you uh, open up your chat box and say hi, that you're posting to all uh, panelists and attendees, not just the panelists, so that we can all see um, your entry in the chat. If you're new, let us know where you're joining us from so we can give you a huge evolutionary hug. And as always, we like to say that we are spreading the good word here in Evolutionary Church, and this is a grassroots movement. We are moving close to that 11,000 um, mark of subscribers, people who have signed up around the world globally to join us in our mission, which is a planetary awakening in love through a unique self symphony, but we need your help. This type of movement doesn't happen all on its own. It requires a little bit of legwork, a little bit of commitment and devotion from all of us who show up every week to get out there and get your friends, get your family to come. We have a replay, not a replay, a well, we have a replay, <laughs> um, but we have a um, a join link in every single one of the emails that we send out, an invite link. So go ahead and send that to your friends. You can find that in every email that we send. Another important announcement that I made last week is we have a new YouTube channel. And in order for me to easily be able to share that YouTube channel with a custom URL, they say, we need to have at least 100 subscribers. And because we just opened up that channel, we're in that process of getting people to subscribe. People are watching the videos, which is awesome, but we need you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I will put that link into both our replay email as well as our um, chat box here so that you can go over to our YouTube channel at some point today and subscribe to that. That would be wonderful, wonderful. As always, our uh, broadcast is being recorded and you will get the replay within the next uh, 24, 48 hours or so. So be looking for that in your inbox. So for those of you who might just be showing up for the first time or haven't shown up in a long time, I always give a little bit of what you can expect in Evolutionary Church over the next hour. We always begin with a Dharma recap. And I, I take us from last week's message with Barbara and Mark into this week with a little bit of a recap of last week. And then we move into our resonance with Barbara. And then she hands it over to Mark who takes us into prayer. And then after prayer, we go into our two messages with Barbara and Mark. And then we end it all right around the top of the hour. So again, we are in week 118 of Evolutionary Church, and let's move into our Dharma recap for today. As we all know, we are at the beginning of the year. Here we are at the beginning of 2019, and we come together to ask ourselves the question, are we ready to play a larger game? Are we ready 
are each of us ready to participate in the evolution of love. So each of us has a very, very real contribution to make to the evolution of love. And to contribute to the evolution of love doesn't mean that you need to come up with something original. There's this mistaken belief in modernity that, oh, to be a real contributor, to change the world, I have to do something original. Um, you know, I have to create something original. I have to write something original. I have to do something original. But that's actually a thinking error that creates problems because it's that line of thinking. In that line of thinking, we can't really be in a unique self-symphony with our shared dharma together. And by shared dharma, what we mean is our shared framework, our shared story that we live by, right? And so we need to understand the truth that our very being itself is original. We each have an original presence. We each have an original quality of intimacy. We're a unique configuration of intimacy. And that's what we call your unique self. And when the Dharma or this shared framework expresses itself through a person's unique quality of being, as Mark says, it adds a letter to the Torah. So it's not enough for us to declare our participation in the evolution of love. You know, ask, we ask the question, part of our code is, are you ready to participate in the evolution of love? It's not enough just to say yes and just to declare, I declare that I'm participating in the evolution of love. Each of us must commit and devote ourselves to the Dharma with, uh, through study, through practice, and by expressing the Dharma uniquely through our being. And it's only then that we truly participate in the larger unique self-symphony and in the evolution of love. So with that, I invite us to enter into the sacred and the holy space of evolutionary church as Barbara sets the resonant field for us. Barbara, I hand it over to you. And I need to, I think you need to un, unmute your audio yourself. There we go. Yeah. Okay. This is a code for all of life, truly. And I'm going to read it as a resonant code. And then in my sermon, I'm going to place it into the larger story as an essential component of the story itself. So, and you please forgive my sniffling. I seem to have some sort of uncomfortable process going on in my head. There we go. Are you ready to play a larger game? And just think for a moment, where is that growing edge of you? Are you ready? Are you ready to be evolution? Evolution is always emergent as you uniquely. Are you ready to participate in the evolution of culture and consciousness. It's not just that we do this internally for ourselves alone, but through our action, we are evolving the culture and consciousness of our species. Are you ready to participate in the evolution of love? Love more, give more, experience more. Mm. Are you ready to love deeper and wider than you have ever had before? 
deeper, those you already love and know, wider, a much broader community of humanity. Are you ready to include something or someone in your circle of love that has always been on the outside? Think of how many people are on the outside, not just of your life, but of life. So it would be good to pick somebody who's been left out of life itself, who's on the side. And you can bring that person in. Are you ready to change, to grow, or transform in a way that you have been given? Only you have been given. Are you ready to be and become more than you even thought was possible? Well, yes, of course you were. If you think you go back to a child, what did you know? And then you get to be 21, and that's what you know. And then you get to be whatever age it is, and you find it's an unfolding drama. Are you ready to be more than you thought was ever possible? Yes. Are you ready to be a dreamer? Yes, if you can tap in to the dream that's motivating you at the core of your being, then that's a huge yes. Are you ready to activate evolution in you, as you, and through you? If you are, can you imagine what it is to actually be evolution as you? The same force that creates entire universe is as you creating? That would mean we would tap into the genius of universal evolution. And I think in the church, we're tapping in to the genius of evolution. So thank you. And with that, Mark, I turn my word to you. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Oh my God. We're in week 118, and Barbara pouring healing love into you, right? Pouring healing love so all head colds and all winter sicknesses disappear into robust, delighted, wondrous health. Yay, yay, you're a rock star. So sending you so much love and healing, and everyone, oh my God, our winter colds in different parts of the world. Welcome, everyone. We're here to evolve love together, and I want to focus as we move to prayer. We move to prayer. I want to focus on the words and the code. Are you ready to participate in the evolution of love? We're turning to prayer now. What does it mean to pray? And we want to evolve prayer because evolving prayer is part of participating in the evolution of love. And to evolve prayer means to reclaim an intimate conversation that has gotten lost in the world. And it's the conversation between the human being and God. There are two great conversations. There's prayer, and there's what we call prophecy. In prayer, the human being initiates. The human being invokes the conversation. In prophecy, the divine initiates. The divine invokes the conversation. But they're both intimate conversations. So for example, creativity, right? Human creativity, right, is often has a dimension of prophecy, right? The, there's a moment, a spark of creativity that moves through us that is clearly not of us. Right? And we realize that creativity is an infusion right, of the goddess. It's an infusion of she. It's an infusion. It's a divine intoxication. So there's this dimension of prophecy when we feel that a voice larger than us, a wisdom more wise than we could be, right, a spirit more potent than anything we can imagine in our skin-encapsulated ego awakens in us, speaks in our voice. The word prophet in Hebrew, nabi, is niv, speech, right? So when I speak, more beautifully than I could ever imagine speaking when that voice moves through me. 
And prayer, prayer is when I turn, right, to the larger field, right? Prayer is when I, I say, it's not enough for me to be in my skin and capsule ego, right? I, I want to turn to the larger field and, in, and invite and, and, and plaintively, right, desperately sometimes ask and audaciously demand, right, and intimately, intimately beseech the larger field, right, the deeper order, the mat, the geist, the brahman, right, the tao, right, Adonai Elohim, right, however we tell the story, right, right, that's what we mean by God, right, you know, my friend Ken, right, loves to say, and I think he says it beautifully, there's two responses in the world to reality, you know, when Schelling asked, you know, why is there something rather than nothing? So there's two responses to that question. One is, oops, 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 right? And we dress up oops in all sorts of ways. We give it all sorts of logical positivism and scientific materialism, right? And we got all sorts of very fancy names. The names for oops are legion, right? But basically, oops means don't ask. That's what oops means, right? Right? And if you ask, there's something wrong with you. You haven't grown up. You haven't matured, right? It's, it's somehow infantile. You haven't come to this kind of, right? That's the oops answer. But actually, the oops answer is the most infantile possible answer, right? It's the question of why is there something rather than nothing? And the other answer, the other answer, right, which has many, many different names, is some version of there's a deeper order. There's, there's a telos. There's a pattern. There's an intelligence, there's Brahman, there's Atman is Brahman, there's Adonai Hu Elohim, there's an implicate order, right? However you tell the story, right? But there's this deeper pattern, this deeper order that we sense in cosmos. So in prayer, right, we move from oops to the deeper order. We turn to the deeper order and we recognize that the deeper order is not just a logical order, it's not just an inherent logical order, it's an intimate order, right? right? That that infinity, right, that expresses itself, that manifests as a deeper order that we sense in every moment is intimate, right? Needs us, loves us, invites us to love it open with him, her, it, it mat, geist together. So feel this together with me, right? Right? Our code today is, are you ready to participate in the evolution of love? Meaning that deeper order turns to us and says, I can't do it without you. I love you so much that I manifested a reality. I turned to you in relationship so that you and I together could love reality open. I can't do it without you. Right? That's prophecy. That's why God turns to the human being. Prayer is we turn to the deeper order and we say, I can't do it without you, right? I can't, I can't meet my life without you, right? I want to be in partnership with you and I need your help. And I need your help to help me fill all of the basic needs I have, right? My need for stability and my need for prosperity and my need for creativity and all of those needs you have intimately infused me with. So I turn to you, infinity of intimacy, and I say, I say, I need you. I need you, right? I need you because if I can't participate in the evolution of love, my life feels empty and, and desiccated, right? And, and ultimately without a larger flavor of delight. And the reason my life feels that way, the reason I feel that I need you is because that's how you've manifested me. So when, when I turn to God in prayer, but it's really, when I turn to God in prayer, it's really the God in me turns to the God beyond and says, I need you, right? And when in prophecy, God turns to me, God says, I, right, the large, the ultimate, deeper order God turned to you, the God in you, and says, oh my God, we need each other. We need each other, friends. And when, when we pray, when we participate in prayer, we turn to the ultimate and we say, I need you. I need you. I'm going to ask you for everything, right? And my need is dignified. And you know that because you manifested that need in me. And so please, please, please hear me. And I know you want to hear me. 
and I love you madly, right? And I need you absolutely and desperately. And let me bring before you my holy and my broken hallelujah and offer it and put it all before you as lovers do, as outrageous lovers do, and know that you're going to hold every word. You're going to kiss every word and you're going to answer every prayer, sometimes with a yes and sometimes with a maybe and sometimes with a no, but you're going to hear every word and you're going to be there in the ultimate response. So friends, the holy and the broken hallelujah. And as we prepare today to participate in the evolution of love, to tell we're today we're going to tell the story, right? The new story. And as our contribution, the biggest contribution ever. But we can't do anything unless we first pray. So let's go inside together. Welcome in week 118, right, to the evolution of love. Evolutionary Church, the Church of Evolutionary Love, the Holy and the Broken. Hallelujah. Drunken intoxication. And hallelujah means hope, right? Divine, pristine praise. So we come before God and we come into hallelujah and we offer it all up. We offer up Shahad and Holland. Oh my God, I'm sick. Oh my God, where am I? When I'm, I'm sick, like all of a sudden, what does the world look like? We, we, we offer it all up, everything the holy and the broken hallelujah, the drunken intoxication, the pristine praise. Prayer affirms the dignity of personal need. Prayer and prophecy, two sides of that same intimate conversation, and we ask for everything. And Nancy Ann, where it begins and she opens up the gates for all of us, let's join Nancy Ann. Nancy Ann says, I pray my friend Donna right, is cured right, of cancer. Right? And that's what we ask. We ask directly, right? Infinity of intimacy, cure Donna of cancer. So let's meet in the chat box, every single one of us, right? and let's ask for everything. Right? Ask for everything. Don't leave anything out. Right? Claire Molinaire Lirazi says, I pray for my mother to feel held in her pain right? and through her fear. Shahad says, I pray for her peace for Petrus's, for peace for Petrus's mother who right? is transitioning right? in this moment. Does everyone get that? Right? Every single one of us is going to have that day, which is our last day. Right? And so we feel that day. And when we're with someone else as they transition, right, we walk them to the other side. I pray, Claire says, for Elsa to find her way back home. Right? Right? I pray that I can let the president into my circle of love. Christine Glenn and everyone, let's join us in the chat box. Don't be a spectator, my friends, to time and existence, as the Greek said. Right? Step in. Step in. If you've never prayed before in the chat box, right, this is the first moment to pray. Right? And when you pray, something happens neuroscientifically. Someone happens in the neurodharma of our hearts and souls. Christine Glenn, I pray that George continues to heal quickly from his surgery on Tuesday. Right? Tom, Tom, it's so good to see you. Right? Christine, it's so good to see you. I pray my learning to evolve love for all will help transform the world onto a healthy, sustainable path. So Tom feels right, that cosmocentric intimacy. Susie, right, I pray that the government in the U.S. stops being shut down. And in all of those individual people, right, who desperately need to get paid, and it affects so many lives to get paid for their work. Joni Mitchell, Jay Mitchell, I pray to be an instrument of global peace, love, and understanding. Ulrich, Ulrich, it's so good to see you. I ask for finding my way to more and more surrender and inspiration to transfer, transform, right, me, right, in my life. Right, right. I pray to find my way to more and more surrender, inspiration. Christina, I pray for my lungs. Christina, I pray for my lungs to heal and to feel healthy again. Right. Oh my God. In New York, sick. Right. Right. Just mad love to Christina to be like totally madly, gorgeously healthy. Suzette, I pray for the ability to improve my most challenging relationships and help others do the same. Sarah Toff. Right, Sarah Taft, I pray for my beloved liver to calm down, right? I pray for Tim, that he find peace in his heart and realizes he's worthy and deserving of love despite the turbulence of daily living. Jim, I pray to fully and completely realize that I am not trivial and I choose to step into my cosmic significance. Christina to hell, I pray for my dog friend Holiday to heal from her highly aggressive behavior. Tracy, I pray for the hearts of man to feel and be loved. And friends, we're praying for everyone in the world. 
and we're praying and we're participating as we pray right in the church of evolutionary love not just for ourselves we're opening up prayer we're opening up the intimate conversation we're standing on the abyss and saying let there be light right the church of evolutionary love is committed to right the evolution of love that's what we stand for liam i pray for all my friends and family who are sick for better health for myself to be a better outrageous lover you hear everyone hear that prayer? I want to be a better outrageous lover. Val, I pray for Dominique and Barbara and my lungs to be healed. And I pray for amazing visions and openings today as I step into my new life, love, and consciousness. Amen. Caitlin, I pray for my family, sister, to find happiness, love, peace, and harmony. David, I pray to surrender to being of divine service and listening and following my heart. Right? Christina, I pray for Barbara's healing from her cold and beyond. Right? Deborah, I pray right, that I find a solution to the computer challenges. Oh, my God, right? Keys, beloved Keys, love you madly. Keys, I pray for my health and be with my health. I offer my unique contribution, right, to the world. David, I pray to transform my experience of chronic pain. And David, as you ride, you and I talked this week, I ride that experience of chronic pain into all the chronic pain in the world, right? Right, so that my experience of chronic pain is a microcosm, he says, of global transformation of the outrageous pain. Linda, I pray for the complete restoration of my physical body, that I radiate love to my full capacity. Joyce, Joyce Hollifield, welcome to church, love. I pray to be open, grounded, and clear in my expression of my love and connection to all of life. Right, Clara, I pray for healing to pour life into all my beloved sisters who are sick today. Right, does everyone feel it? Right, let's open it up. Let's love it. Open, Marianne. For my friend George Marianne, it's so good to see you. Healing and knowing how valuable he is. Right? Laura Dow, I pray for my mother Carol's knees and way to my cousin Marjorie Ann's Mar- Marjorie Ann's health. And that we're holding the light. Deborah Penner, Deborah, let me full on flow love through me. Petra, I pray for Gisbert to be more in love with his daughters and himself. Does everyone feel that? Right? Jackie. I pray that Dan Fry C accepts the yearning of his soul to be with him. In each one of these prayers, when Jackie offers her prayer, she's offering it for, for everyone. She's offering it for Dan, but she's holding not just Dan. That's our intention in Evolutionary Church. Every prayer opens up the gates of prayer for everyone right, that wants to pray because everyone wants to be intimate. Right? Hallelujah. Right? Hallelujah. Enoch, we missed you right? Right in on Dharma Circle this week. Right? I pray for outrageous love. Enoch, it's so great to see you, right? Right, everyone, does everyone feel it? And let's rock it open. I pray for my eye to heal promptly, right? And Barbara's gonna take, right? Simona, I pray for Bruno to consciously step into his beauty and goodness and for me to realize that I am love even beyond Bruno, right? Oh my God, friends, right? We are here, Church of Evolutionary Love, right? We are Da Vinci, right? We are in Bethlehem, right? We are standing for the new order, the new elegant order, and for the new story. And we're going to weave all of these prayers. And Barbara's sermon and my sermon and our sharing, we're going to weave this together into the new story. And literally today, in this moment, right, in Church 118, right, we're going to cross over to the other side and make the story real in ourselves. And I turn my word filled with radiant health pouring into you, Barbara, right? <laughs> pouring in as you look at all these prayers. Thank you so much, right. Mark, and everybody who has sent their love. And I'm sending the love back to every single person that whatever we need to be healed, whatever is hurting, whatever doesn't quite work, let it in this field of love be healed. As I was contemplating this code, I realized we might as well go the whole way with the code and see that it's really an expression of the cosmic love story. In other words, all of these original ideas that that seem applied to us, are you ready to play a larger game? Are you ready to be evolution? Are you ready to participate in the evolution of culture? I, I, in preparing for this, I decided to say this to the evolutionary impulse itself. The evolutionary impulse running through the billions of years of evolution is God in action. And if you really love God, you're going to feel ever more deeply God in action as you. And when God is in action as you, just for a moment, realize what that actually means. 
because that God in action, as you and me right now with these prayers, this is the God that took us from no thing at all to everything that is. The awesome genius of God, if you realize an evolutionary perspective and you're not seeing that it just happens like that, what you're actually discovering is the genius of God. And the genius of God, when we say, yes, are you ready to play a larger game? Who are you asking? If what larger game are you getting ready to play? If what you're, if what you're calling into is the God in you unfolding as you, and the God in you is always at threshold, in the sense that evolution itself, if you can look at it from a truly God perspective, from an external gestalt, you will see this incredible process of evolution from billions and billions of years. The threshold you and I are at right now, I feel in my body, is that unfolding. And the great thing about the evolutionary church is that is unfolding consciously through us collectively as the evolution of love. Now, you put all that together, you can see that God is really pleased. In fact, you could say that God's been waiting for this for a long time. So just to, to take this context, and because I always love the big story, as Mark has written so well, the universe itself, the entire universe is a love story from quarks to us. And what is the nature of that love story? <coughs> it's totally reinforcing of everything we're doing in the church. For all the five mass extinctions, for all the entities that didn't work, the purpose of this evolutionary love story is always going toward three things. And this is from, from our great friend, Teilhard de Chardin. It's going toward higher consciousness from single cells to us. It's going towards greater love and complexity. And it's going toward greater freedom of choice. The, the God value system that has been placed in the core of evolution that's in every one of us now and is in you and me exactly where we are so just, just take the story internalized as this is God's code. And God's code is playing the larger game by your saying, yeah, this is the way I put it. It's my consciousness in this moment is the consciousness of universe evolving. And when I say yes to it, I'm saying yes to that. And it's an awesome power. It, it's not just my personal consciousness. And then when I say yes, to the second great thing that nature has been working on for billions of years, from quarks to us, from rocks to internet, is freedom. And it's really interesting to ask yourself, what is the greatest freedom that the, this love code of evolution is offering to you? You probably have many different choices in your life. You could do this, you could do that. So here's the way I think it's best to do it. Out of whatever freedom you have, if you go toward greater consciousness of source of, of evolution and toward greater love through greater complexity, which is to say add more love to your system, bring more people in, go to the person outside and bring that person in. So in other words, if I say yes to myself, I am saying yes to consciousness, freedom, more complexity as an expression of that itself, praying. I mean, who's praying here? Who's asking? I am, you are. Who are we asking but the thing itself? Asking. Is that interesting, Mark? The thing itself asking. Okay, so the Church of Evolutionary Love 
we let's just ask ourselves for this moment how do we fit into the billion multi-billion year story of evolution how come a church of evolutionary love has just cropped up as far as i know there is no other church of evolutionary love there are many churches that are speaking for love and certainly the earliest church of jesus was love me as as i have loved you jesus was the personification of love in hum, human form and that formed the original church but then so many other things came into the church i'd like to declare that the development of the church of evolutionary love in some respect has a new kind of significance like the very very first church did people died for that people lived for that people it, it totally transformed culture until it got taken over politically we're not taken over politically we totally transform culture by doing exactly what we say we're going to do and i'll just complete here with a vision i see as this evolutionary church grows and as we have now have a youtube channel and we're going to replicate there will be churches in different parts of the world i am seeing the church of evolutionary love at the very moment of quantum breakdown or quantum breakthrough on planet earth being the protective mothering fathering love that's going to carry us through the quantum shift and with that i turn my word to mark do we need any contribution love <laughs> <laughs> Mark, the reason I, I forget is so you can remind me. I, I know. We, it's like a ritual. I mean, I mean it, it, it makes an enormous difference to all of us. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> away, love. You know, what happens is I get carried away and then I'm seeing the church do all of this. So, yes, what would you like to contribute to make this church play its role for you, for us, and for society as a whole at the time of the quantum shift on planet Earth. Who, and you see that where you can place whatever you think it is, and I am asking you not only to give what you want to make this happen, but see if you're capable of sharing this with others. How did that early church get formed? People invited themselves into small communion groups. And they started to take Holy Communion together. Now we have a church and we can take Holy Communion together here on internet and in, in person when we find each other. So I would say please con contribute as much as you can to spread the word of the Church of Evolutionary Love at the time of quantum shift on planet Earth. And thank you. I turn it to you. Thank Mark. you, love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pouring blessings into you, love. So, friend, <laughs> let's let's take this. Let's. I want to lift Barbara's word together with all all of our prayers, and let's find this. Okay. So first, take time to make a contribution. Right. So we can actually build the church, and we say every week the same thing. There's no salaries paid. Right. No one's pocketing any money. Right. That that new Rolls Royce that Barbara just got. You know she. She bought that with funds from someplace else, that Rolls Royce, that pink Rolls Royce. No, she didn't buy a pink Rolls Royce. It was red, right? So, friends, friends, right? In order to, maybe, and maybe, beloved B, maybe put yourself She's on needed. mute for a second. Got it. Oh, you're awesome. Thank you so much. You are a rock star. Thank you, thank you. So, the contribution allows us, right, to actually build a church, right? I and mean, that's, like, utterly essential. Right, and one of our good friends actually made a, a huge contribution, which in a few months is going to let us take a one leap forward with one piece of the church. And every small contribution, everyone who gives five dollars a month or five hundred dollars a month, right? Joy stepped in and said, "Okay, I'm going to do five hundred dollars a month." So we were able to up level one piece of church. But if you can do a hundred dollars a month, fifty dollars a month, right? We can't actually. And I'm, I want to say something a little bit, kind of a little bit, just kind of direct here. Right. In the end, the holiest day of the year, I used to say when I was living in the Middle East and I was doing a television show there. Right. And I used to say, you know, to the public, you know, the holiest day of the year is not the day on the calendar. It's not Ramadan. 
which is a particular holy day in the Middle Eastern country, right? Right. It's not Yom Kippur, right? Another holy day in the same beautiful Middle Eastern country. The holiest day of the year is when the legislator passes the budget. And when they decide where are they going to invest resources, right? Because that's, in the end, that's the story. So if I spend more money a month seeing four movies a month than I do on Evolutionary Church, then I can say whatever I want. I'm for love and light and I want prosperity, right? But I'm, I'm basically lying. I'm not telling the truth, right? If I spend more money on irrelevant things in my life, on having three cable channels and, right? But actually, I'm not doing $50 a month to the church. I'm a liar, right? So it's okay, but just, just know that, right? So we got to know, and I'll just say just personally in my life, right? I've always been delighted to give away money. $50,000 here, $20,000 there, $30,000 there. And I'm, by the way, I'm, by the way, I'm basically poor, right? I mean, not like, you know, really poor, but poor, right? You know, I kind of worry about money every month. And I try and figure out how to close the month. And I worry about upcoming bills, right? And I'm, I'm chat, right, in that sense. And I've given away tons and tons of money in my life because it's only what we do with our money that reveals what our true yearning is. I'll tell you something very beautiful. Right? The Hebrew word for money, kesef, K-E-S-E-F. Kesef means money, and kesef means kisufim, which is a biblical word from the book of Psalms, nichsefa nafshi, which means yearning, longing. So the word money means yearning and longing. So money reveals what I yearn for, okay? And Laura, Laura, Laura Dew says the PayPal link isn't all blue. You can copy and paste the whole thing and it will work. Amen. So I think that was a note to the Holy Lisa. So I'll leave that to be taken care of by the goddess, right? But to kind of feel that, right? Feel that, right? What do I yearn for? And it's a very big deal because that's how we build the church. When we actually yearn, that's what Bernie Sanders, right, said, you know, I want people to make, you know, all across the country, small contributions that funded his campaign. Right, so we're, we're, we're doing a campaign here, right? This is a campaign. This is a campaign for a politics of evolutionary love. And everyone knows that a campaign is only successful if the campaign can do its fundraising effectively. And no campaign makes it without that. And there's an entire series of books written about how things rose and fell. You know, in Israel, right, there was a very famous woman prime minister that some of you may remember, Golda Meir. Right, Barbara, remember Golda Meir? as a famous Israeli woman prime minister. And Golda right, actually transformed Israel because in 1947, right, right before the establishment of Israel, Israel was essentially going bankrupt. And Golda Meir from Wisconsin right, came to America and did an incredibly successful contribution campaign, which actually saved the state of Israel. Wouldn't have been a state of Israel without it. Right? From Wisconsin, yay Wisconsin, right? Right, she was from Madison, Wisconsin, actually. And, and so the contribution is not a detail. Oh, there's the sermon. That's the important part. Now we're doing the contribution. Let's get that done. And we're light about it. Actually, it's the ability to actually locate our yearning. And we locate our yearning through where we resource our lives. Right? And so I'm just a huge invitation to everyone to really open your heart and resource church. And not that, by the way, it would be wrong if you were resourcing anyone's salary. That would be fine, but you're not. My right? church is not structured that way, right? I pour money into church every month. Barbara pours money into church every month, right? Significant, right? Lisa, right? We're all pouring, right? Make this church ours, okay? So, oh my God, does everyone get that? Yay, right? So let's find that together, right, all the way. Now, let's take the next step. How do I participate in the evolution of love, right? What does that mean? So I want to feel this with you together, and let's make this super practical. What am I drawn to in the world? Right? We have an idea we've talked about in church, which is allurement. And allurement is one of the qualities of love. It's one of the qualities of eros. And an allurement means I'm drawn to something, right? right? I'm moved towards. And my unique self that we talk about, which is the core part of the new story, right? I'm homo amor, right? Meaning I am a unique set of allurements, 
I'm uniquely allured. And that's the structure of reality, right? Just like protons, electrons, neutrons, atoms, atoms are uniquely allured to each other. There's a unique structure of allurement and only particular atoms can come together, right? right, and actually make a particular new relationship. So shahati, right, open that up, open that up, feel it. Only shahati, right, can actually, right, come together in a unique way and offer a particular contribution. Only Tom Goddard sitting in seat 15F, right, on a flight from Boston to Phoenix at this moment, right, who just came on church, right, right, there's a unique set of allurements. Now, to know my allurement, I've got to actually get clear. I go inside and I clarify my allurement. So I'm gonna do these steps with you together. So let's find ourselves in the chat box, okay? Right? And so the first thing I wanna write is, and this is an unusual thing is, because this is how we participate in the evolution of love. The first step is, right, right, I am willing to clarify my allurement. Does everyone get that? Who's gonna help me write that? Right, I'm willing, everyone up, let's write together. I'm willing, right, write Suzette, to clarify my allurement. That's a very big deal. Lisa, I'm willing to clarify my allurement. Shahati, even when I'm sick, and I'm willing. Sally, I'm willing to clarify my allurement. Simone, I'm willing to clarify my allurement. Jim, I'm willing to clarify my allurement. Okay? Or does everyone get that? Christine Glenn. Marianne, I'm willing to clarify my allurement. Liam, I'm willing to clarify. Lee Raz, I'm willing to clarify. Deborah Penner, I'm willing to clarify my allurement. Sarah Taft, it's, a, it's huge, right? The clarification, Klaus, Petra, right? The clarification of the allurement is the first step because allurement's often not clear, right? Allurement is one of the qualities of Eros. Eros has many qualities, right? Right, right? The clarification of allurement, right, is what Luria, right, one of my lineage teachers called and Right, right. We just got it from the sky on the flight from Boston to Phoenix or Phoenix to Boston. Right. Luria calls it bearer, B-E-R-U-R, bearer. And bearer means, right, the clarification of desire and allurement. Right. What do I desire? What do I really desire? And it's what Buddha was talking about in the original Pali Canon when he said, have few desires, but have great ones. Right? What am I really allured to? Right? So there's all sorts of pseudo allurements. There's pseudo desires. Right? You can do everything in the world on two levels. You can do things to get a hit of dopamine. Right? So we can do writing to get dopamine hits. We can do sexing to get dopamine hits. Right? We can start evolutionary churches to get dopamine hits. Right? And we, we, we feel empty. We want to cover the emptiness. Right? And so we do some exterior activity to get dopamine hits. Right? That's pseudo allurement right? That's pseudo eros, right? In other words, we feel empty. We look usually unconsciously to cover the emptiness and we cover the emptiness with a kind of pseudo allurement and pseudo eros. But ultimately it doesn't work, right? The emptiness stays empty. I've got to find my great desires. I've got to find my great desires. When Buddha says have few desires, but have great ones, what Buddha misses is, right? With due respect, he misses the uniqueness. It's not just have few desires, but have great ones. But, but your great desire is, right, the desire that's unique to you. It's your unique set of allurements. Does everyone get that? So the next step is, not only I'm willing to clarify my allurement, now ready? I'm willing to claim my unique allurement. Okay, so we're doing a lot of work today. I know these are not short phrases. So thank you for helping me. I'm willing to claim everyone get that? I'm willing to claim. Let's write it together, right? I'm willing to claim my unique allurement, right? So first I'm willing to clarify, but then I'm willing to claim. I've got to claim. I'm willing to claim my unique allurement, right? Does everyone get that? I'm willing to claim my unique allurement. You've got to claim it. It's yours. It's waiting to be claimed by you, right? I'm willing to claim my unique allurement. This is what I madly love to do. This is what I'm drawn to do, right? Right? I'm willing to claim my, my unique allurement, right? I'm willing to claim it. I got to claim it, right? And once I claim my unique allurement, I got to go to the next step. There's step three, right? Which is, ready? And that step three is, is critical. That's right. Sarah, my unique allurement is what I'm most drawn to, right? What I'm most allured to within the context of my life. 
So if I say I'm most drawn, right, to run for president in 2020, well, the truth is I am, right? I'd like to run for president, but right now I've got to finish a bunch of very critical books, Homo and More, right, et cetera. So I'm not going to run for president in 2020. I might in 2024. I'm not taking that off the table, right? Maybe we'll have the Church of Evolutionary Love. We'll run for president together. But, but my, my allurement has got to work in the context of my life, right? Most of us, I've got to balance, beloved, my job, right, and writing unique voice, right? And how do I balance those, right? But as I look at, first, I got to claim my allurement, right? I got to claim it. Right? This is my allurement, right? I want, right? And, and, and let myself want, right? Let the experience of want and desire rise in me. We've taken desire off the table. We've talked about a God without needs and desires. Right? That's a huge mistake, right? Every stream of religion at some point made this mistake and said God is beyond needs and desires. That's not true. That's one taste of divinity, a taste of perfection but there's a second taste of divinity, which is the desire of the, inf the infinite, the allurement. Infinity is allured to the finite. That's what Blake meant, right? When he said, right, infinity loves the productions of time. Infinity is allured, right, is drawn to, and then, right, divinity, God, infinity claims, right, that allurement, and then infinity takes a third step. Here's step three. You ready? Here's step three. I'm willing to take my unique risk, right? In order to claim my allurement. It's a long sentence, but stay with me, okay? Because you can't do it without a unique risk. There's always a unique risk. I'm willing to take my unique risk. It might be my unique risk might be, oh my God, right? I'm going to take six months off, right? I'm going to take a huge unique risk to make a gorgeous contribution. That's a big risk. It's a big deal. It's huge, okay? I want to recognize and honor and be delight. I'm willing to take my unique risk in order to claim my allurement. Right now, a risk, a risk is not reckless. Okay. A risk is the road when it's my unique risk. My risk is the road to rapture. Right. My unique risk is the road to rapture. So I'm going to just get that sense. We really get this. Okay. I'm willing to take my unique risk in order to claim my allurement. And I want to recognize here's the next sentence. My unique risk is not reckless. Does everyone get that? My unique risk is not reckless. You willing to write that with me? You up for that? Right? My unique risk is not reckless. Right? Everyone get that? My unique risk is not reckless. It's huge to understand. It's not irresponsible. My unique risk is not reckless at all. My unique risk is not, it's not about being reckless. It's not about being irresponsible. My unique risk is not reckless. Right? Rather, next sentence. Right? My unique risk is the road to responsibility and rapture. Okay? My unique risk, right? And thank you for being willing to write with me this morning. I'm so appreciative. Right? My unique risk is the road to responsibility and rapture. That's wild. Does everyone get that? My unique risk is the road to responsibility and rapture. My unique risk is the road to responsibility and rapture. Okay? And there's no split between responsibility and rapture. We've kind of split them. Our oh, responsibility. Oh, God. I had a rapture. R&R, &R, right? That's the new form of R&R, &R, right? Not research and right, right? R&R &R is responsibility and rapture, okay? My unique risk is the road to responsibility and rapture, and let's get excited about this, okay? My unique risk is the road to responsibility and rapture. You won't get excited with me, okay? Right? Let's get excited. My unique risk is the road to responsibility and rapture, Right? My unique risk is the road to responsibility and rapture, right? And here's the last step. For realsies, Val, that's right, ontological, which means for realsies. My unique risk is the road to responsibility and rapture, right? And here's the last step, right, everybody? Right, my rapture, my rapture, right, is giving my unique gift. My rapture is giving my unique gift for the sake of the evolution of love. My rapture, my rapture, right? Let's get this last step together. My rapture, it's rapturous, it's ecstatic. My rapture, my rapture is giving my unique gift for the sake of the evolution of love. My rapture, right, right? And let's write it out. My rapture, that's rapture. My rapture, my ex is giving my unique gift for the sake of the evolution of love. That's true.
right? My rapture is giving my unique gift for the sake of the evolution of love. And what we've done is we've written this code, Petra, right? Caitlin, Tom, we're writing this code. We're impressing this code on the lips of the source code. We're impressing this code on the lips of God, right? We're actually participating together right now in this very second in articulating these steps. We are literally participating in the evolution of love. And I want to say, Hey, we've never articulated these steps like this together. And why are we doing it right now? We're doing it right now because we're together. Right? And it's emerging from Barbara's sermon directly. This is a commentary on Barbara's sermon. That's all I'm doing. Then a little commentary on Barbara's sermon, right? Which is a commentary on the code. Right? And we're doing it in the space in between. It's the holy space in between all of us. And there's only one question we have to ask in order to do this together. And it's wild. And the question is one question only. Lisa Engels, what is the question? You know what it is. It's how deep is our love? That's the only question. And that's how we're going to conclude church. We're going to conclude church with that question and that song and that delight and pouring mad love, right, and healing into Barbara, right, and mad love and healing into Christina and mad love and healing into Shahati. And I could use a little